All right, guys, welcome to Drawing Nature 101, where we draw objects that exist in the natural world from A to Z. These are gonna be distributed in nine different chapters, and each chapter will have three different types of objects or landscapes involved in it. So the first chapter that we're gonna be covering is A, B, and C which is Arctic, Beach, and Cave. All of these that I've drawn in the tutorial are on Procreate, but for most of the chapters, I'll talk about different techniques you can use if you're using different mediums. So even though I'll be doing many things digitally, I'll explain how you can achieve that look in acrylic or watercolor or gouache depending on what the environment is. So for the Arctic we're drawing a full landscape in color with very thin sheets of ice, a horizon line, a sky, and I'm going to be walking you through my entire process of doing that. For the beach we're going to have a sunset scene, there's going to be a palm tree, clouds, and we're mostly going to be focusing on color and blending as well as how to do the palm tree. Next, we have a cave. And for that, we're going to draw our line art first. And then after we finish that, we're going to do all the base layers of shading and then do some texturing, which I'll show you how to do, and highlights on top of that. For chapter two, we're gonna be covering the desert, earth, and fire. It was so close to earth, wind, and fire. But it's not September, so what can I say? <laughs> so for the desert, we're going to be covering sand dunes under a beautiful sapphire sky. It's going to be mostly about contrast and blending. Then for the earth, I am literally going to draw a globe floating in space. Then for fire, I'm going to be talking about the Procreate brush that I use to create fire and also how to create it traditionally if you want to just create a painting or a colored pencil drawing. For chapter three, we're going to be covering G, H, and I, grass, horizon, and island. So for the grass, I'm going to be talking about two different techniques. One of them is a black and white line art inspired technique for just drawing the basics of how grass flips in clusters. And then the second technique that we're gonna use is a full-on color field kind of technique. And then with this one, we're gonna draw bunches of grass together without having to draw every single blade of grass. So you get the idea of what it is without having to put in you know, hundreds of hours of effort. Then we're gonna talk about the horizon, uh, what a horizon line is. We're gonna draw a street coming in in a linear perspective uh, into the very, very back of our horizon with a beautiful sky above. And then for I, for island, we're going to be drawing an island from a drone kind of view. So it's gonna be looking up from above. We're gonna see the ocean surrounding as well as that beautiful coastline and the forests and lush vegetation surrounding the island. For chapter four, we're gonna be covering J, K, and L. For jungle, we're actually gonna be taking a scene from the jungle book minus the characters and breaking it down into steps, mostly focusing on color and how to draw blocks of vegetation without spending you know, eternity on it. Then for K, we're gonna do kelp, which is a close-up piece of kelp in the ocean. And then we're gonna be talking about lightning, which there's a Procreate brush that I use specifically for lightning, but I'm also breaking down how to technically do it in different mediums as well. For chapter five, we're gonna be covering mountains, nest, and ocean. For mountains, if you're doing something in acrylic or oil, I highly suggest watching Bob Ross teach how to do shading on mountains, especially in oil. He teaches it really, really well. I break up how to do shadows and highlights on it and where the general shape comes from, but of course I always suggest using references for mountains. For nest, we're going to be coming in with a solid base color and then using some texturing to make it look like 
It's comprised of a bunch of pine needles and different kinds of debris from trees. Then for the ocean, I'm going to be talking about how to actually draw waves both close up and far away to get that really nice perspective that you see when you're standing at the coastline looking out to the vast expanse of the ocean. For chapter six, we're gonna be doing plants, quartz, and rainbows. Because there's so many different kinds of plants, I'm gonna be covering just the general shape of a pothos, which is just a plant you can find at home. It's kind of uh, viney and really, really lush. And the technique that I use for that can be applied to many different kinds of plants, which is why I like using it. Then we're going to talk about quartz, uh, kind of how to draw the clusters, what the shapes are. Then we're going to talk about rainbows. For that one, it's actually pretty simple, but we're going to be messing with transparency and how to contrast it against different backgrounds. For chapter seven, we're going to talk about stars, trees, and the universe at large. For the stars, I'm going to be, of course, teaching in Procreate brushes and then talking about how you can use acrylic and water to splatter paint stars in the sky. This is also applicable to the universe as well. And then for trees, of course, I also reference Bob Ross for this one because he's got some great tree tutorials. But we essentially start with the trunk, shadow, highlight, pretty much how to make a really nice looking tree in just a few simple steps. For chapter 8, we'll be doing a volcano, a waterfall, and a cirrus. And for the volcano, it's going to be active, it's going to have glowing lava coming out of the surface. It's going to be really, really beautiful in almost a scary kind of way. <laughs> then we're going to be talking about how to do a waterfall. Uh, this includes rocks in the background, trees and vegetation up front in the foreground, and then how you can make water look like it's bouncing off of rocks into a pool below. Then for the cirrus, that's going to be a very small type of yellow flower. It's going to be pretty simple, but we're going to use a really cool texture brush to bring more expression to the piece. And finally, for chapter 9, we're going to be talking about yucca, which is a type of tree, and then a zinnia, which is a really ornate kind of flower. So now that we've summarized all of these different chapters and essentially what they're going to be covering, let's dive into it, guys.